Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games. I'm Harry. And I'm Lily. And he also met Lily. <laughs> All right. That joke never gets <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> so today we're going to be going through Lily's top 20 through 16 games of all time. For those who missed it, please check out her other video that we uploaded a few days ago, her top 25 through 21. And also make sure to please hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. So let's get right to it with Lily's number 20. And bear with me, I am in the process of either losing or getting my voice back. So, <laughs> my 20th game of all times, Medici. All right, Medici. Medici. It's a really nice game. We play it pretty often with our um, nieces, our nieces, well, our niece and our nephews. And this is what it looks like once it's set up. Essentially, you can pretend that you are some sort of uh, merchant in ancient Italy. More like a Renaissance, medieval kind of Renaissance Italy. Yeah. Italy. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, goods, right, that you're like bidding for. And everybody's a merchant and everybody's trying to score the highest token in this little round thing. Um, and it... It's, it, I, I really like the component of the cards. I like the size of the cards. And I like that you can either pick to the reveal one card, two cards, or three cards. But if you no longer have space on your little, what do you call it, card holder. Yeah, your boat. It represents your boat, your ship. You're very limited on what how, the amount of cards that you'll, that you'll do. So anyway, this is a pretty good game, pretty fun game. It's not a long game. And it's really easy to learn and easy to play. So... Highly recommend you guys to try it if you haven't. Mm -hmm. What are the ages for this? What are the ages for this? Two to oh no, two to six. Ten, years. ten and older. Ten, ten and, and older. older. Yeah. So yeah, it it serves itself for the younger population if you're. In, yes. In yes. A shortage. So in this game, you're doing some auction, some auction and bidding. Each round consists of a player putting up a couple of different commodities for auction, and each player takes a turn. Uh, bidding, uh, one one bid, you know, different auction bidding games do the auctioning different. Here, it's a once and only bid, so you better make it count. Sometimes you want to bid just to make sure that your opponent doesn't get it for too cheap. Yep, that's Harry. Yeah. Always defensively. And what's cool about this game is that it kind of, you know, progressively in in increases the scoring. So as the game progresses... You're, you're scoring more and more exponentially because you're working your way up these different tracks for all the different commodities. You score bonus. Yeah, and if you have the highest on each of the respective tracks, you score bonuses. If you get the tracks very far up, then you score additional bonuses. And also you score for having the most valuable ship at the end of each round. Um, and like Lily said, it, it plays pretty quick, but if you like auction bidding, it's a, it's a nice game. Yep. So don't forget to try it. All right. I'm pretty sure you have to order it somewhere because um, I'm not going to find it on Barnes & Noble's probably. <laughs> probably not, yeah. All so that's right. number 20. So let's that see what's number, number 19. Number 19, uh, family favorite, Time's Up. This is actually a party game, which can uh, plays well with lots of people, right? Because you just make teams, essentially. And it's like a combination of gestures and what is the other game clues or whatever no it's uh it's charades this is charades really more like charades and yeah. gestures and yeah all in one all the fun stuff in one except you don't really draw yes Maybe. you don't draw it's no, not like pictionary not. it's not like pictionary but it has a set of cards in which you pick out of them and then essentially everybody reads the cards out loud once and then everybody has to say describe the card in the first round like you know, taking turns, so like with two teams, right, against each other, and one person from the team is trying to use words to describe the cards to the team, and the team, uh, well, at first you're just describing it, I think you just describe it before you read it, right? Yeah, well, at first you can use uh, as many words as you want. Yeah, I know, but did you read them all to begin with? No, 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 at the end of the no, first no, you, round. You read them at the end of the first round, so the first round you're essentially going in blind and trying to get the team to uh, guess what the cards are, right? 
uh, at the end of the first round, then you go ahead and read all the cards out loud so everybody knows. Because it's crazy stuff. It's like stuff that doesn't make sense, like names of people or like well, this, names of movies. Well, this edition is called Titles Recall, Title Recall. So basically all the cards consist of different titles, book titles, movie titles, song titles. And for as cultured as a person might be, there, not, there's going to be songs and movies and books that you've never even heard of before, right? But the clue, the, the, the key is to break down the words one by one, right? Because you might not yeah. know what that title is, but you might be able to know what all the words in the title are, For right? Instance, literally, there's one thing that says, there was, there once was there a lady. There was an old lady who swallowed, swallowed a fly. fly. Now we ruined it for everybody. The heck know? is that? So, it's fun. Mm. It's cool. It plays well with multitude of ages. So we play it with like the 11 year old niece and, hi Caitlin. And also, <laughs> like, all the way up to, like, the adults. Our young adult nephews. Our young adult nephews. <laughs> and, and, you like, know, lots of our, our adult friends and, as like, well. And, we, we always play, play with... when we have, like, game nights and stuff like that. Because it's really, like, a fun game. One that you can play towards the end of the night when everybody's, like, lacking in energy. Because it, it, it kind of, like, helps to spring everybody up, everybody's energy up. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the second round, you do a word clue, a one-word clue. And then the third round... Uh, you just act it out and essentially you're on a timer and that's the round that counts whether you get the points or not. Well, actually it's a cu cumulative thing, right? Yeah, you, you go, score more and more points. And it's as the really game fun. progresses, it gets more difficult because in round two, you can only use one word and then from that from that point forward, you're just, you know, um, making uh, gestures and mimicking and things like that. Hand motions, sounds even, um humming but only one word and then in round three you have to be a mute you are only doing gesturing and mimicking but it's but it's cool because you don't have a new set of cards for each round so as long as you can kind of remember but I mean, this all the cards, cards that went through like 40 cards or something I, I mean it depends you know it depends yeah. every player can choose how many based on how long you want the game to be how many cards they want yeah. to be in the game but we usually play with about 40 cards so it's, well, it's a lot of cards for people to remember what already went through yeah that, yeah you know? so and again it's like weird for that I did not realize that this was a different edition. There are different editions. Of there's this game? just a regular. There's a titles re title recall. Um, there's times up. Just regular times up. Uh, it came out maybe ten years before this one did. And then there's times up title recall. The thing about times up, the regular times up, it's people's names. Okay. I do think that people's names. What I've heard is that the people's names ones is a little bit more difficult because. Yeah. It's harder to make someone guess a person's name if they don't know it That's than true. a title if they don't know it. Okay, I thought it was different objects. And no, things, but I no. guess not. All right, so yeah. I highly recommend that. It's my number 19. Yes, yes. Great party game. Time's up. This one you probably will find at your Barnes & Noble. You might. And, or you might just... I don't know about Target, but maybe, maybe at your Barnes & Noble. Okay. Number 18. If you know me, you won't be surprised because I love... Bonanza. Bonanza. And everything that is Bonanza. <laughs> Maybe because I'm Cuban, I've always had an affinity to beans. Not that I can cook them, but I can certainly plant them <laughs> and reproduce them too. <laughs> really like Bonanza. This is the actual game, right? The, the regular. Yes, this is the full the multiplayer full game. The full multiplayer version. And I say that because I usually we usually play the two player version. Oh, spoilers. Oh, oh, sorry, or the dice version, or like they have a spoilers. ton of versions. <laughs> Bonanza apparently is a German word for bean. Bone, yes, bone is a or bon. Anyway, to bean or not to bean, <laughs> I always choose to bean. Mm -hmm. um, really fun caricature like cards, you know, and you essentially have they have numbers, so you, they build up on each other. You can plant them in order. Uh, they only score if you, if you have multiples, and it tells you which what how many multiples of each one per amount. On the cards, you uh, trade them back and forth. You have to sometimes disregard them if you, because you only have like three fields to plant. It's a little, it's a little weird. I know it's a little quirky, but I really enjoy Bonanza. Well, the interesting thing for Bonanza, in my opinion, is the very unique mechanism where you cannot change the hand order. Yes. It's the only game that I'm aware of that has that. Most card games, you 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 do whatever you want with your cards. In this game. The, the rule states that you must keep your card in the same exact order that you get it. And as you draw more cards throughout the game, you place them at the end of your hand and you must keep them there. So in order to get to certain places in your hand where you want to go to, you need to be crafty 
and a little bit cunning and know how to, you know, Even negotiate and trade with your uh, opponents, oh, yes. sometimes giving them things that, yes, it's going to help them, but it's also going to help you because it's it, it gets those cards out of the way so you can get to the cards that you really want to get to so i find that and to be a very neat you also can bluff and the other person can call your bluff that's actually that's actually for the other bonanza oh really this that yeah bluff? there's no bluffing in this game it's just straight Never up trading mind. it tells you that i haven't played this one in a little bit because we usually do the two yeah. player version yeah. but every time i play this one it's really cool so never mind don't bluff yeah. don't lie <laughs> No bluffing, no bluffing. All right, that's number 18, Bonanza. Number 18. And now we're on number 17. Number 17. Loyang. The gates, at the gates of Loyang. At the gates of Loyang. So I'm on a Chinese Mandarin face as of like two years ago or three or maybe longer where everything I watch is Mandarin. So not a big surprise that I am a fan of a Chinese... Uh, themed game where guess what you also plant I guess I should have been a farmer but I became a nurse practitioner instead so I think I missed my calling in life I also don't have a farm so it doesn't matter we buy things <laughs> already already canned we get our farming fixed through gaming so we really we're do. Good. you'll find as you get to know me that all my major games are farming and or work spoilers yep <laughs> big, big surprise there but anyway at the gates of Loyang, you get to farm, you get to plant, you get to trade with different merchants, uh, you get to complete different, not missions, what are you called? Well, you have customers, customers that you're trying to meet their demands, you have regular customers, and then you have the non-regular customers, and casual you customers. you practice your Chinese while you're at it, because it's either hao or bu hao, apparently. So anyway, I obviously have not learned much in the last three years, for, I'm getting better. For our viewers who are not familiar with mandarin or any uh, dialect of chinese he's referring to a little token that you place on your regular customers that signify whether or not you've satisfied their demand so these regular customers they're demanding a certain pair of veggies from you from round to round How dare and you? if you're unable to supply them their demand they become upset and you need to represent that with the the token the satisfaction token and if you ever fail to meet their demands two, town, two, two turns in a row, then you're going to pay a penalty. So as you're getting these um, long-term, uh, you know, regular customers, and you kind of make your decision to get them, you, you don't, you're not, they're not forced down your throat, you have to make that commitment knowing that if you cannot provide their needs from round to round, you're going to be actually paying money instead of making money, Right. It's going to hurt your business yeah. and your planting. But anyway, you plant in fields, you reproduce. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of similar thing to like Agricola. Agricola? I've heard of that game before. No, yes, uh, yes. Foreshadowing there. No, 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 all, no spoilers. We no do spoilers. not do spoilers on our channel. All right, guys? We do not do spoilers. A similar feel to Agricola. <laughs> so, if you like to handle small tokens in the shape of... Uh, what is that thing again? Different vegetables. This and this. Uh, is that radish? I think that's radish. Radish. Yeah. <laughs> beans, leeks, mm -hmm. pumpkins, and Chinese cabbage. <laughs> this is your game. At the gates of Loyang. Check it out. Awesome game. Wonderful game. Really? Uh, oh, who is this guy that does it? Uwe Rosenberg. Yeah, I'm in love with him. At some point, I will meet him. <laughs> He's like, not like that. Like Hi, Uwe. Way. He's, I'm a fan. I'm a yes, number one fan. Yes, yes, Uwe Rosenberg. We admire his work. Absolutely. He does not do anything that I didn't like other than Mamma Mia. Yes, there's a card game Sorry, known as Mamma Mia. Mama Mia Lily, was, Lily's not a fan of that. He's not my cup of tea. <laughs> not really into pizza toppings. But anyway, that's neither here nor there and not in my first 25. So, at the gates of Loyang, check it out. Go order it somewhere where it's orderable. If not... <laughs> I'm sure at some point we'll have a link at some point yep. with the things. That's number 17. Probably not on your Barnes & Nobles. Go mm -hmm. find it, though. Do go find it. And now number oh, 16, the last one for this video. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. Boulder Dash. All right. I didn't even know that was a real word. I, mean, I still don't know what it stands for. What is Boulder I, Dash? I don't know. Mean? I think it might be German for, like, baloney or, like, 
you know. Essentially, whenever you don't know something, it's probably German. <laughs> pretty safe assumption you can make in the board game industry because all the great minds are either French, German, and a few Americans. You gotta change that about <laughs> There's the great minds in other parts, but yeah, you know. Yeah, they're German. It's not all German, yeah. but. And maybe they have more time to play games, and that's why it's so popular. <laughs> anyway, we once lived in Maine for like two years. Two long, cold, cold years. But we made really good friends there. And this is one of the party games that we used to play with like teenagers. They were like 13. They're all like 18, 19, maybe mm. even 20 at this point. Uh, this was like seven years ago. But yeah, they were like 12 and 13. And their parents. And their parents. Who taught us the game. Who yeah. taught us the game. Right, they had this game. They, they did, out. they did. They actually had the original you, edition Lyle of Boulder Dash. The modern edition you. of Boulder Dash includes what was once called Beyond Boulder Dash because Boulder Dash originally just included words. Um, it included words that sounded like they were fake but were actually real. And this one also I'm includes dates, includes people, includes movie titles, and includes funny laws that all sound silly and made up, but they're actually real. I love to play this game with a particular group of people. They have to be really fun and super creative. Yes, yes. <laughs> you can't be boring when you play this game. But boring people, you're not invited. Look at that. So you get a card. So like each person takes a turn. You get a card with like either weird words, peculiar people, incredible initials, yes, marvelous initials, movies, initials. or laughable laws, right? And the person who is sitting out and whose turn it is, it's actually, re it's actually picking, or we're rolling a die and we're picking yeah, a die, random, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But let's say, like, you have the incredible initials. The incredible initials are P-R-R-I, right? And then everybody in the room has to get a piece of paper and a pen and write down what they think a real guess of what P-R-R-I is. Well, not necessarily a right? guess. If you, if you do happen to have this knowledge, because this is such obscure knowledge, right? It's something that... 99.999% of the time, you got, you have no inkling of what this means. But if you do, you could throw out a guess. But more often than not, what you're trying to do is you're trying to guise your answer. It's a, it's, it's fake. You're making it up, but you're trying to craft it in a way that sounds a Legit. little bit believable. So a lot of other people could vote for your yeah. stuff, right? So every, it's all gonna be read at the end of the round. So everybody's gonna put a vote of what they think the real answer are. Right, so P R R I. If you think that probably stands for like, I don't know, planet of red, play, or whatever. Real. Don't know. You can guess it. Raunchy. Maybe. It really is Puerto Rico. And I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Didn't know that Puerto Rico had a rum institute. I guess they now. Oh, look at that, Puerto Rico rum. But institute. either way, the point of the matter is that the person's. The people sometimes it's like really silly answers that people come up yes, with. Yes, definitely, absolutely. Sometimes. Lots of lots of laughter in this game. Lots of silly. I love it. There's not a single time that I probably won at it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just just have an amazing time at it. It's one of those party. Well, games. the good thing is you don't play to win. Yeah, so it's a new thing. It's a new thing that I'm doing. <laughs> I'm playing to lose. Apparently, nobody plays to lose. I mean to have. Fun. <laughs> anyway. Coming back to Boulder Dash. Um, plays well with a lot of people. Doesn't really have a limit. It says here... It six. says two to six. I, I wouldn't play it with much more than six because no. I feel like it will devolve and just... It'll be too long before it you're is, like the judge again or the main player again. That it is definitely the last game that we play in the night. Like, it, like it's like Time's Up. Maybe Time's Up is like one of the, better, one of the beginner games. Mm -hmm. And this is like... That's everybody simmering down when you, and we're just like, what kind of nonsense... <laughs> can people come up with? Yeah, yeah. Right, Francis? Lots of Taiwanese princesses that are vampires, apparently. <laughs> Inside joke. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's not uh, watching. Not watching. Else. Not yet, at least. Well, you we'll know, you, I think this game, Balderdash and Time's Up also, are very are indicative of kind of the differences between Lily and I in our appreciation of games. Because while Balderdash and Time's Up are two of my absolute favorite party games of all time neither one of them rank in my top 50 games of all time and okay. both of these games rank as high as lily's top what 19 and 16 so obviously lily has i get a, a greater affinity to the party game style than even i, I love do. the party game i feed of a crowd 
I the heavier games I have to either be planting base or really into <laughs> or something, right? Yes. Like this is a game that I'll play with my eyes closed. It doesn't matter if I slept or not that previous night or if I'm super sick as I am today. <laughs> I'm gonna play this. Uh, ah, it's, we, do, we, do, we need three people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Boulder Dash. You probably will find it in Target and Barnes and Noble. Probably. So go look for it. You won't regret it. All right. And that was 20 through 16. We That's are two fifths of the way done. So our next video for Lily will have her top 15 through 11 games of all time. So I, I'm guessing that as we draw nearer. To 11, uh, to 10, we're getting closer to the games that Lily feels really solid about, right? Yeah, essentially, the first 10 is like, the first 5 is like, which one will it be, you know? Because I love them all the same. Yeah, it hurts to pick one it over the other. It hurts to pick one over the other. These ones, I, I really like them all, like, a lot. Yeah, they could fluctuate over they really time. Could. Yeah. Like, right yeah. now, I really like, I feel like yeah. playing Boulder Dash. Yeah. So that next video, the number 15 through 11, it'll be coming out next Tuesday. So please stay tuned. Uh, between now and then, we still plan on uploading other videos. But that'll be the next uh, top five um, uh, series for Lily's top 25 games of all time. Thank you so much for watching us here at When Harry Met Board Games. Please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in board game related content. And... As for me, I'm Harry, signing off. Thank you so much. And Lily, see ya. Take, Take care. care. Thanks for my voice. Bye-bye. <laughs>